Welcome to Hard Cam Wrestling Podcast, where falls count anywhere. There are no disqualifications and a two-hour time limit. Introducing the participants. The opinionated one, Ryan Sangster. The 18-year-old piece of gold, Joseph Parr. The real deal, the anti-miz, Ryan Palmer. And the real franchise, James Richards. Welcome to the Hard Cam Wrestling Podcast. This is the New Japan Wrestle Kingdom 15 Night 1 Review Show. Starring Joseph Parr. Say hello. Hello. And Ryan Sangster. Say hello. Hello. I bid you farewell. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Cheers for the intro, dude. Yeah, we've not done this before. I know, it's a bit strange. So, um, yeah, so we've just obviously watched Wrestle Kingdom 50 Night 1 Live. Um, obviously, over in the UK, it was, you know, early hours this morning. Um, how did you find that the pay per view went then, as a whole? Uh, we, we, if you've seen our post on Facebook, we were very, we've been openly very excited about this show. Uh, and yeah. I think it was somewhat <laughs> of a letdown, to be honest. There was How pretty mean? much two good matches on there. Where it, well, the tag match was all right, but it did have Tai Chi in it, so. Uh, <laughs> it was just. For a Wrestle Kingdom, you expect like a, pretty much all good matches, and there were only really two. That's yeah. the way I saw it, at least. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't as big as what you expected, but no. obviously the um, the opening match on on the main card, you know, was a bit of a letdown because bad luck for ELP got got fucking injured after he'd done that fucking high dive. Did you see yeah, like on the um, I think on his Twitter he'd posted that when he actually done the flip into the air, he'd done like a double two sweet, but you, you didn't fucking come off on the yeah. cameras. Yeah. So he's probably spent all his time doing that, and that's probably why he fucked his landing. <laughs> <laughs> his ankle. So he probably probably missed quite a lot of the fucking high spots yeah. that he'd done. And then I couldn't watch half the match either because New Japan World... Oh, yeah, you had problems, didn't you? Yep, not, again. Not paying bills or something. Yeah. <laughs> not paying taxes. <laughs> not paying taxes. Illegal <laughs> streaming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean... That's like, what you expect, though, is it? If I was watch, if I was using a, an illegal website, which I would never do, yeah. if I was using that, you'd expect it to buffer a bit, maybe. But when you're paying for the streaming service... <laughs> It's not on really. I'm fairly sure I called out yeah. New Japan World the last time we did this as well. There's there's a few people that have actually scrapped New Japan World and gone to fight, but fight TV is I ain't paying twenty quid for Wrestle Kingdom. No. I mean like I can get it for if straight we, quid. Yeah, well if if New Japan World wasn't a thing, then we probably would be paying fight because we do for, well I do for like AEW pay per views and that. Yeah. If I'm watching live, I'm gonna pay. Um, because I don't want the fucking streams to buffer and, and go to yeah, shit like yeah. if you're the illegals and that. But obviously, with the likes of New Japan World, you know, for like eight quid a month, it just, exactly. it just makes no sense. So, but yeah, so you've had a few issues with that. I did, but but I was fine. Half I got I got it back like part way through the tag match. So the Grills Destiny. Let's get into the show, shall we, Ryan? Yeah, I know you watched the pre-show. Yeah, yeah, I watched the pre-show. So obviously, um, yeah. So it, obviously, it starts and they had this whole big, massive thing about how Chase Owens was desperate to be number one, and you know how he thought he could go all the way through, and blah blah blah. So as soon as they done that, you knew Chase Owens was going to be one of the four. Um, and then obviously, oh, my dog's woke up. Um, so then we had, you know, Ishii come out and started, like, fucking hammering on Chase Owens and then fucking Suzuki come out third. So then Ishii and Suzuki were then both taking it in turns to just beat shit out of fucking Chase Owens. But you and it, it just went like that. Yeah, it went like that for a little while, but 
obviously I knew I fucking knew as soon as they made the big thing at the beginning that he was going to be one of the four. Um, right, I think so. it's good the fact that we didn't have like we didn't have any prior knowledge to really who was going in. Yeah. I, I didn't even know the that. match existed. Yeah, fucking, yeah, because normally I don't bother with a pre-show. You so, know, there's been, and, like, there's been one every year except for last year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I've known of it, <laughs> but I've not really bothered or cared about it. <laughs> Just I because... unfortunately didn't get to watch the match. Well, I'd, I'd say unfortunately, but... No, I mean, the, the match was what it was, you know, it was like... You know, it's battle royals to the last four. You know what I mean? It's nothing exciting. Very TNA but... type stipulation, isn't it? Yeah, I battle just really... but then the last four people have a match. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the best part about it was probably the finish. The show, like obviously we had um, Chase Owens, Bad Luck Fale, and Ibushi in the ring, and I think what's that? Just... You said Ibushi, it's just Bushi. Oh, sorry, Bushi, Bushi. Um, to shout that one because it's in all caps. Yeah, I have to make sure we say Bushi, otherwise you want to go, Bushi wasn't in this match. Um, <laughs> so, fucking, and then I think there was like two or three young lions in the match too, so obviously they threw out um, the young lions as Yano was walking down to the ring. So obviously the three of them are waiting for Yano to get in, and and then they're like, "Oh yeah, that's the match done. There's our four four participants." And Yano hadn't even fucking entered the ring yet. <laughs> it's just <laughs> great story, it's Yano. Funny. It's just typical Yano, isn't it? <laughs> they're like, "Oh yeah, he's like the stuffiest man in wrestling." <laughs> it's just like fucking boss. He is the best. <laughs> he is funny. Like I have to give him that. Hey, is is in ring works not the best and shit like that, but the character, the character's entertaining, isn't it? Yeah, I don't even think he's that bad of a wrestler. He just doesn't do it. It's like Orange Cassidy. Yeah, true. I just I don't know whether I'm excited to see Chase Owens, Bushi, <laughs> Bad Luck Fale, and Toriano in a. Just, I can't wait to see Bad Luck Fale and Chase Owens team up against them two, and then just Chase is Owens going to be on the pre-show. Bad Luck Fale. <laughs> Is it on the yeah. pre-show or is it on the actual main card? No, it's, it's, it should be on main card. It should be the first God. match of the main card, I believe, yeah? So, I mean, you might want to set your alarm for an extra 15 minutes in bed tomorrow. <laughs> well, I don't think on this much. That's, it's got to lead to Toriano being able to body slam bad luck for, they? Possibly. Because what, what show is it? The Super Junior Final? Where they had the tag match, and that was the story. The match he couldn't body slam Farley, so. Ah, right, okay, yeah. That'll probably be the finish. Yeah, probably be the finish. Fucking just big body slam. slam. And the crowd start fucking yeah. like mad. <laughs> yeah, how fucking weird is that? I mean, I know New Japan fans don't really get overly excited anyway. You know, the ones that are there in, in the arena, but fucking just to hear the odd clapping every now and again. Yeah. Just, it's a bit strange, on it? It is. I mean, slightly better than no fans, but not by much. I think just seeing the fans there, there was makes a difference as well. It was fucking ridiculously packed, wasn't it? Yeah, the actual attendance. That's got to be. That. That's got to be like one of the biggest crowds assembled, like just straight out after COVID. Yeah, like, yeah not even just, just in wrestling, just in general. I think it's mainly cleared over there. I know they've still got guidelines in place, but that's what they were yeah. saying. They were like, oh, it would have been bigger if if we didn't have the guidelines. And I was looking at yeah. the crowd, and I was like, they're not fucking sat. Like, yeah, I was like, no seats left. left. Yeah, they're all sat on each other's knees. <laughs> they just can't speak to each other. <laughs> no, they just can't make any noise. It was very, it was very weird, but like, they're allowed to clap and stamp, but they just didn't do it. Yeah, they just really didn't fucking. Oh, did you see it on the the um, the Taka, um ELP where he goes to rise to the Terminator? Did you watch? Did you yeah, see that? Part? Oh no, that was so cringy. Oh, and he goes to do it, and, and yeah, there's literally not no a one sing sound. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> like four people are clapping. 
It's just <laughs> thinking he's passed away. He's just like fucking. I'll do Raz the term, and he's it. Oh no, it won't. Yeah. And then it's like he hits the stars clash as well. And then didn't he V trigger? Yeah, I thought I thought he tried to hit yeah. it, but didn't do it. Second time he actually connected. He uh-huh. got a two count off it. And then he used V trigger. And then at one point, didn't he go for the one thing danger as well? <laughs> Just a whole host bullet of bullet club, club leader moves. Yeah, I was just waiting for him to do the coup de gras, and that'd have been it. <laughs> <laughs> do you use the coup de gras in New Japan? I'm not too sure. To be fair, I didn't didn't catch much of Balor's work because I didn't I didn't watch New Japan back then. Probably would but, have been like the bloody Sunday, Devitt. wouldn't it? Vince Devitt, sorry, but New Japan yeah. enthusiasts. <laughs> Yeah, sure. yeah. Would have, he could have hit a... What did I, was Adam Cole ever the leader? No, Adam Cole was just... Um, was he in... He was with Styles, he, wasn't he? He was in Omega was there, was it? I think he was probably with... Well, did he go through both? He might have gone through both, yeah, but he mainly stayed in Ring of Honor, didn't he? Yeah. Because it was Adam Cole and Box stayed in Ring of Honor. Obviously, the Box went between the two quite, yeah. quite frequently. So it was like Marty Scale though, isn't it? It's like he turned yeah. up the big the odd big name, name redacted. Can't say that what? name. Marty Scale. Can't say that. <laughs> we can't say fucking half the English language at the moment. <laughs> All on the fucking nonce list. Um anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> so Gorilla's a destiny. <laughs> Girls no. Destiny versus Dangerous Tech. <laughs> we didn't even talk about the first match. Well, not we not did. completely. We didn't even say the finish. I'm going then. Sorry. Do you would you like uh, to Hiromu? Talk- Hiromu oh, won with a roll up. Not sure what type of roll up because buffering, but he won with a roll up. He won with uh, a roll. So he goes on tomorrow morning slash night oh, yeah, wherever yeah. you are. Early to face, forgot that. Yeah. To Ishimori. Face Ishimori for the. Junior heavyweight title. Yes, which we've seen before in the I think it was the final, wasn't it? A year or two ago? About two yeah, two years ago. Like Would it not been more interesting to see like two bullet club junior heavyweights going after the belt well, then? This is this is why I picked um ELP. This is why I picked him to win because although I thought Taka would probably win it, and I think obviously the, the best of the Super Juniors tournaments are a lot bigger than the Super J Core. Yeah. But <clears throat> you know, I just, that I just thought it's so dumb. <laughs> yeah, like you I win this want... tournament, but you get a jacket. You get a gold jacket. <laughs> yeah, cool. Thanks. I know he's there at, at, at the fucking at the, at the uh, commentators go. Where's Liger? Like, yeah. on about me? <laughs> I like the way ELP just ki- yeah just kick the jacket down the ramp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he I don't want this shit. Balls and everything, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> It's like flossing his ass with it. <laughs> but, but, um, I think the only thing that we've got to, well, I wouldn't say the only thing, but the, the, the main positive we can take from this is we've seen Taka versus Ishii Mori before, and we know yeah. it's going to be a it's fucking be good. match. Yeah. Well, providing there's no injuries. Well, yeah. Well, you never know. He I'll think- decides to get injured. So, do you reckon he would? Do you reckon that match was always meant for Hiromu to win, or do you reckon the LP got injured and they changed it? No, I think Hiromu would have definitely have still won it. Like he's he's yeah. the bigger name, he's the bigger draw, you know. Um, but I just feel like that the match would have been better. They definitely had more high spots. Yeah, it's good. Oh it's yeah, good it was you know what I mean? It still got yeah. us hyped for the show, so that's what it Indeed. needed to do. And they had to bring it down with the next match because it had Tai Chi in it. The next match with Tai Chi. Yes, IWGP. <laughs> Tag Team Titles, Dangerous Techers, which is an awful name. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. and Tai Chi versus Gorilla the Destiny, Tamatonga and Tangaloa. This... Yes. It was all right, you... actually. Yeah, you're not really a fan of G.O.D., are you? I'm not the biggest fan of G.O.D., but that was a good match. I prefer yeah, them, but I'm, I'm very not a big fan of Tai Chi, so. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I think it was it was good. It was good to see them win the seventh championship. Uh, you know, it was, I, I just can't get used to Tamatonga and his fucking lock, man. Okay, I got really confused as to who was who. 
Yeah, because his hair, hair is very mm. similar. And I think it's only that they wore different colours that you can tell the difference between them. <laughs> so do you think that Tangelo is like more the more like prominent wrestler in that match? What do you mean, like in, in the ring doing the bigger moves? Yeah, I feel like he was the yeah. more showcase wrestler over Tama, which it usually is. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, but maybe they're just trying to show people that he can do more than what people think he can do. Yeah, because he is like, his brother. Yeah, yeah, because that's what everyone knows him as, yeah. really, isn't it? You know what I mean? Or, or that that what that guy just wants an Im- impact. You know right, what I mean? I know him as Camacho. <clears throat> Camacho. You know, uh, he was actually Camacho with Hunica, who's now Sin Cara. Yeah. That was many moons ago. Good Camacho, been... to be honest. They've got to be in um, New Japan for a good few years, both of them now. Uh, Tamatong has been in there for quite... Tamatong has been there since Debit was there. Yeah, yeah, because he was first ball club, wasn't he? Yeah. This Did match... you know, just didn't really do much with Bullet Club. Is in the way of there was no, none of the other bullet clubs interfering no. in each matches and shit. Jardo was there, but he didn't really do much. <laughs> no, for like a big heel faction. Well, saying that though, yeah. he, he was there for the, he was there for the end, of, wasn't he? Because he he obviously yeah time to pick up the win. Uh, bullet club has taken a big hit. Like even yeah. not just because all their best members left, but just the booking. Booking's been terrible since. Yeah. The, since they put Jay White as the leader, yeah, unfortunately, but the Civil War was awful as well. Like it's a really good idea, like in like a Bullet Club Civil War, but they just did it so poorly. <clears throat> yeah, but then after like after the Civil War had ended, didn't you? Know, obviously, yeah. they called themselves the Firing Squad, didn't they? Um, and then it was the whole big thing of oh, Bullet Club has no leader. Yeah. And then, the next week, it's like, oh, Jay White is our leader, and it's like, but you've just fucking said, mate, he ain't no leader. But they like, also, he also like Bullet Club never had a leader before. Yeah, he's always had a leader. That was the whole thing. The new guy comes in when the when the old leader's about to leave to go to America. The new mm. leader takes over. It's always yeah. been. So it's not yeah, like there's yeah. never. Oh, you're trying to take over Bullet Club. We've never had a leader, but you always have. Yeah, well, that's the thing, isn't it? But it's just, it's like I say, it's, just, it's not the big heel faction. And I think, no. I think apart from the, the evil's original fucking turn. Yeah, that was the from, only good part of it. Yeah, that was fucking terrible. And they never, they never rated him as, as like, you know, a leader of the company, no. which is what they should do with the heavyweight championship. Yeah. Well, when, especially when you've been in both titles. Yeah, it was just more. Literally just to get over fucking Naito twice. Yeah. In one year. But, you know, piss ball. The thing is, it's also, wasn't it meant to be like outsiders coming in? There's only like what one Japanese one in there, which is Yujiro. But now there's mm. like Evil, Gado, Jardo, Kenta, Ishimori. Yeah, it's quite may, a few, well, may as well just be any other faction at this point. May as well just be Suzuki yeah. Gun. But to, to be fair, though, I mean, it's it's hard to to keep bringing in the the names, especially now that like, you've got yet another big fucking American company. Yeah. You know what I mean? Are you going to be able to to attract US stars that maybe you've just left, or you know, who have never been to like the big big company like WE? You know, yeah. they, like, well, they were using Ring of Honor because obviously they had that um, contract, didn't they, where they were working yeah. together. But are you really like if someone's going to leave like a Ring of Honor, or if they've just left WE for not being used, and you've got the likes of fucking AEW now yeah. around, you know, are they going to then go and pick up fucking shop and move to Japan for fucking three, four years? Yeah, it's not as attractive uh, as it once was. No, unfortunately, especially when so you got Go to Sleep Club, Go to Sleep Club and his jizz boxes. <laughs> <laughs> did you fucking see them when, I, when I posted it up oh, fuck me it's like they were like oh yeah it, it, we, we've got these boxer shorts and they're based on the yeah, the shorts that Kenta wore tonight I mean if you haven't seen it go go on New Japan go and have yeah. a look at the fucking boxer shorts it was on, on the fucking the left side it's got like these white lines and it literally just looks like someone's yeah. just gone up 
fucking wiped the knob down his leg. He's got like jizz <laughs> boxes on. Takes you back to the old AJ Styles. Fucking oh, yeah, the best t shirt ever. Oh, come shit. Easy <laughs> AJ Styles t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the finish of this match was um, Tamatonga hit, I think, Tai Chi with the iron glove that had been passed him by Takashi Iska, which I didn't even realise he'd done that. And uh, then Tangaloa hit like a Samoan driver, like Rikishi driver, whatever you want to call it. And that was the three. Was it not? I thought it was the glove straight into the pin, no? No, nah, it was the glove, and then he had like a. Rikishi driver, whatever you want to call it. Oh, I must have blinked and missed it then. Yeah. <laughs> then they they went off to celebrate in the crowd, which they'll probably which get I, in trouble for. Yeah, which I found very very strange, being yeah. like still part of this fucking pandemic. <laughs> what I liked was none of them moved out of their way, but they all just stayed yeah, sitting yeah. down while they were trying to walk past them. <laughs> Yeah, they're like proper bum shuffling along the fucking yeah. way. <laughs> it's like when you go pitches and you're fucking, you've left halfway yeah. through to but go oh, for just a pitch like you stand up to let someone pass. They're like, nah, mate, I've yeah. paid good money for these seats. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm watching Despicable Me too. You're going to have to just bum shuffle past <laughs> me, mate. You know what I mean? It's just like, fuck it now. I've been told I can't make noise. I've got to stomp, so I'm not standing up. <laughs> yeah, I've got to get my feet ready. Sorry. <laughs> And you just watch me popcorn, you nearly still done it then. <laughs> Fuck shake, tango lower. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> yeah, so they just they they celebrate on like some big platform thing. Yeah, to be fair, like I've I've seen the pictures online since like um uh, on Twitter and that and the, you know the pictures look boss with them being yeah. on the platform and that. Um, but obviously it just seemed very strange and the fact that like you say, because they were doing like this bum shuffle along the railings. Yeah. <laughs> The cameraman didn't obviously pick up on it and go, oh shit, we'll pull away yeah, and then come just back. Cut back to like Zack Sabre Jr. and Tai Chi in the ring. No, we're gonna, yeah. we'll just watch them awkwardly try and make their way through the crowd of people that aren't moving for them. <laughs> watch them proper struggle. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> it, was, it was very awkward. Oh, what is the Destiny's so- theme song, though? Girls of Destiny is just boss, man. I yeah. fucking love it. I, I miss it when they come out. Like, they, they done it as your kingdom last year, the year before, and they come out with them fucking, like, motorbike fucking helmets, and they lit up. That look fucking sick, man. They <laughs> come out. The pain. <laughs> yeah, sort of, yeah. <laughs> so awkward when you point that out. <laughs> yeah. So, who copied him? So, yeah. So... I mean, we can go to the next match, but what I wanted to quickly talk about was the um, the announcement they did um, partway through was that New Japan is set to come to UK and USA TV. It's sometime in the future. If it's going to be a, like a weekly TV show, who actually wants that? I don't think it will. I think they, I think they just mean that the shows that they already do, they're going to put up. Like, you know, obviously, um, I think New Japan Strong's now gone weekly, hasn't it? So I think yeah, that'll be part of it. I think so. But that's well, already on TV in America, though, isn't it? Yeah, but it's not over here, though, is it? No, nah, but a weekly New Japan show isn't like that. Doesn't appeal to me. No. No, like your New Japan is 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 your getaway, isn't it? From yeah, from weekly, the weekly, weekly shit, like, storylines, yeah. Because they don't, they're not big on stories, and when they do stories, it's it's like it, it, they have to matter. You know what I mean? Like like yeah. like Will Ospreay and fucking Okada story, and the the Jay White and and Ibushi rivalry. You know what I mean? You've yeah. only got a few that are actually like story based gimmicks, really. Well, the less stories are told in the matches, really. Yeah, that's where it's the main focus, isn't it? So yeah. I can't imagine like sitting there um, on a I don't know probably Wednesday because everyone goes to a Wednesday a Wednesday yeah. fucking night and watching fucking Tai Chi come out and cut a fucking twenty five minute program and then for some reason Ric Flair comes down. You know what I mean? I it just it's not something that I want to uh, watch. But I think the the reason why I said I think it would be on Sky Sports is because I think it's you know Sky Sports maybe looking to replace WWE what they lost um, yeah. and obviously it, with them putting on like pay-per-views I feel like they're going to charge like 
15, 20 pound, like what yeah. fucking fight was for the pay-per-view. So I think that's what it'll be. It'll be more like a box office than an actual fucking thing. But we're not sure yet because they haven't really announced no. much to it. But it's 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 a it's a big step in the right direction for, for New Japan. Yeah. It's not it's not for me, but I I can imagine it'll get it'll do good numbers when it does come to UK and US TV. But again, it's it's another thing is like if they are doing like your your pay per views where it's like paying out like fights, you know, does that mean that they'll stop stop having like New Japan World available over here? I hope not. <sighs> yeah, should I? I don't want to pay fucking twenty quid. Well, when they're paying it, it, they'll they might end up doing what Impact Plus do, which is like you get the smaller shows, like you'll get I don't know like New Japan Cup or something. But then like shows like Dominion will be paid for like before. yeah i don't really want well, that impact, they do like do you like the the small pay-per-views but like if you want like slam anniversary you have to buy it yeah i mean i'm hoping that doesn't fucking happen because you've just literally like we talked about you we're paying eight pounds for fucking both nights of wrestle kingdom yeah. and then obviously you're gonna get new year's fucking dash on there and fucking everything yeah that, that's the one for the one price per month so yeah, that was one announcement. They done another announcement. Yeah. I did see was that they're gonna do a, a new Japan game for Smart oh, Mobile. Yeah. So Smart I know that devices. You've, you've already the got the card game, haven't they? Um, that, does anyone actually play that? I downloaded it when we first got it, and I had to download it, like this fucking app thing because it wasn't available on Google Play yeah. at the time we first released it. And then, like, I got I got me got me cards and that, and I was buzzing. I was like, fucking, hell, I got some big names, you know, Osprey and um, Chase Owens. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> all the big names. So I was like, I was like, yeah, this is boss, and it's like builds your own faction. So I've done that, and then I was like, right, I don't know what the now fuck what? I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> The instructions are all in fucking Japanese. So then I was trying to watch because Will Ospreay done like a video for it. Yeah, on, on those adverts. Have you, yeah, it's like yeah. When they when they cleanse, it's like you got like uh, Tenzan or someone else just like there showing like, oh, this is these are all oh, look at what card I got here. Yeah, but I then, don't want to see that. They still don't actually tell you how to play the fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> So, One thing I um, did want to point out was the pre-show like video with who's that guy, the weird hair guy. Oh, I'm not Stand actually sure. He, is. he just he literally he looks like. Do you remember Don Callis, the boxing promoter for Mike Tyson back in the day? Don't know if you all know because you're only a kid, aren't you? Don Callis. Mm, not Don Callis. From Impact. <laughs> not Don Callis. What the? Oh, my head's gone now. You you throw me off. <laughs> what was, what was you his fucking fu- name? I find out what, what you name? told. Phil, it's basically... Don't look in the group, because if you look in the group, it'll say fucking Don Callis, watch. <laughs> basically, there's this guy with, like, weird tall hair, kind of like Sonada's hair, and he was singing a really weird song. It's like, the yeah. before the show, it was like a really weird video package. It was quite disturbing, to be honest, more than anything. <laughs> but they kept using him? Yeah. Yeah, because he was at the start. Of the, we just, we forgot to mention that he was at the start saying about Wrestle Kingdom, and then Ricky Choshu oh. came out with his grandson, who looked like he wanted to be anywhere else but there. Yeah. Phil for time. Phil for time. I'm just, sorry, I'm John just King listening. Chan. Is that his actual name? That's what you wrote. I wrote that. what. That's what you put in the group, Don King Chan. Yeah, that that was his name. But that's not his actual name, by the way. Don King was Mike Tyson's manager, so we just threw Chan on the end. So, Fair enough. So that is not his actual name. That was just me trying to be funny, but no one got the reference. <laughs> that's who it is. Anyway, it was a really <laughs> awful song, and the video was really disturbing because it was just with Okada, and he's just standing in front of him. Yeah, it just I don't know. It was just fucking weird, like. You know, me, me missus, she was, she's not really that into wrestling anymore that she was, and she was sat there on the couch and she was scrolling through Facebook and she just happened to look up when he was on, on the screen and she just looked shocked as fuck and she's like, who's he wrestling? Ricky <laughs> Chosen. <Chosen. laughs> Toriano. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> let's get on to the next match. But before the was it was the video package before the match or after? Before. Yeah. Uh, so we get a video package. I instantly think Hangman Page because there's horses. Uh, but it turns out to be John Moxley holding the U.S. Championship, saying that he will face whoever wins this match down the line. Essentially. Yeah. Did did the uh, did the show you want some kids to keep it? I don't know. I wasn't really listening, to be honest. Do you know? I only I I come out for a quick fag break and then fucking <laughs> I, I was on the group chat and you put yes and I was like, what the fuck's this? So I ran in <laughs> and then I seen like the last like say twenty seconds of it and, and my lad my lad was watching it with us and he just shouted all the way through it and I was like, nice one. I didn't know the fucking weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. Thanks. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> what is what that? is John Moxley's gimmick in New Japan? Yeah, just What's he got up. to do with Cowboys? Well, he didn't really, did he? Because he was all about the Death Rider. That, yeah. that was... That was well, his name was the Death video. Rider. It's just like horses, like horses running across like a, an open field. Like what? Maybe I he just wants like, to turn up on a horse at, at a big event. Maybe. If he turned up on a horse, that would have been amazing. Yeah, but would it? It doesn't fit Moxley. Like when when Hangman done it for Stadium Stampede, that that fucking really worked because he's a cowboy. Like yeah. imagine John Moxley turning up, like looking at Mox the way he looks and that, and he's there in his fucking <laughs> camouflage no. fucking pants, <laughs> chatting the horse. He doesn't wear those in New Japan. He wears the trunks. Oh, them trunks were awful, weren't they? <laughs> and then he's probably still got his eye patch on from last year when Chris Jericho took his eye out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to come out in the white. He's going to come out in the white vest like Dean Ambrose. <laughs> who did he? Who did he face in New Japan? He still had the uh, the eye mask on. Was it Suzuki? Uh, he's faced Defending Suzuki, Juice Robinson. It was when he was. It was when he was facing Suzuki, wasn't it? And and he come out with the eye patch still on because Jericho had obviously took his eye out. Kayfabe. Yeah, and then halfway through the match, the eye patch just disappears, and all of a sudden he can see. <laughs> And everything's yeah. flying, and then, like, fucking, he finishes the match. Like, why did you wear it in the first place? <laughs> yeah, goes back to AEW next week, and all of a sudden he's got a fucking eye patch on. And, it's like... and then in the match against Chris Jericho, his eyes all of a sudden better, so he takes the eye patch off, like, oh, I was tricking you. Why did you wear the eye patch in the first place then? Yeah, yeah. Are you uh... just hindering yourself wearing an eye patch? <laughs> <laughs> I was tricking you. Just, there, to... but... <laughs> just for the pure man. shock about you taking it off. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much, wasn't it? Yeah. But it was like, because he, he got keyed in the eye, didn't he, by Jericho? Yeah. No, that, was it a key? Oh, yeah, Santana. it was a key, yeah. Yeah, because it was all to do with him stealing the car that Jericho yeah. gave him as a gift if he joined in the circle. But I just love the way they're like, oh yeah, they're, none of you's none of you's watched Moxley versus Suzuki in New Japan. <laughs> yeah, and realise his eyes fine. <laughs> 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 right, let's get back to it get back to the, the show it was satoshi kojima versus kenta for the u.s rock to challenge briefcase it it wouldn't have been it wasn't as good as juice robinson versus kenta would have been it's not as good as like quite a few of them versus kenta to be yeah. fair but there's a point like, when he announced it the roster they had the <laughs> roster they have and out of all the people they could have chosen they went you know what satoshi kojima this yeah, 50 year old man like David Finlay why couldn't he have done it he's Juice Robinson's tag team partner Kenta broke Juice Robinson's orbital bone surely Finlay would want some like revenge for that well would yeah because they've been in New Japan recently I was going to just about to say actually are they, are they still in Japan or, or are, they, are they at home isolating or whatever but no they, they're in Japan aren't they so they, yeah. they could have used either of them or even fucking Ishii or Suzuki Literally you know anyone <laughs> yeah apart from Taichi <laughs> yeah oh, Taichi pulling double duty back to back imagine <laughs> <laughs> So it ended pretty much as we expected with a fucking GTS. Yeah. It was, it was like two fun. shotgun knees, then a GTS, and that was it. So do you feel like they knew that the match wasn't going to be that good, so they wanted to put the Moxley package in to get everyone still talking about the US Championship? Yeah, maybe. Do you reckon the package would have gone on after the match if it was with Juice Robinson? 
I don't know whether, like, like you said, you you reckon it might be for like a Dominion, which is normally like June. Yeah. So I don't know whether they'd have held off using the package because mm. it doesn't really affect um, them right now. So why use it right now? So maybe the fact that they knew that the match wasn't going to be the best, yeah, and they wanted people to actually care about who won this match. You, you know, Kent was never losing against them, so no. why not throw? Could it you imagine that? Satoshi Kojima just hits a Larry and just pins Kenton. And, <laughs> and then goes on to face Kojima. <laughs> <laughs> That'd have been fucking awful. <laughs> <laughs> With his, and he gets some spunky chunks as well. <laughs> spunky chunks. <laughs> just shots. <laughs> it, was, oh. it was fine. It yeah, was, it wasn't... It wasn't a fiend Goldberg, you know, it wasn't no. a disaster. But it wasn't it wasn't like a fucking fantastic match, was it? No, it wasn't like yeah, it you was know passable. You know, Mox vs. Kent is gonna be a fucking draw. Doesn't matter what they put that oh, on yeah. to be like you're gonna tune in, you're gonna fucking watch it. Yeah. Yep. So next match, this was is this the worst match of the night? Which one was the next one? This it's Hiroshi Tanahashi taking on the Great Okan. It must be this one. See, I think it's probably still worse than the first match, even though ELP was injured during that match. It just it wasn't good, was it? It just no, it really it was just wasn't. dull. I don't think that like I, like I I had an argument with someone. Well, not an argument, more of a disagreement with someone um, in the build-up when I was posting stuff on um, on Facebook and that. And it was like, oh, Tanahashi shouldn't be facing Great Okan. Tanahashi should be in a big spot on, on Wrestle Kingdom, blah, blah, blah. You know, he's a massive name, this, that, and the other. And it's like, yeah, but at what point in his career does he start trying to build the new guys yeah, up? You know he's, what I mean? This is what he does now. He's the gatekeeper, really, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's 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 what he needs to be doing. Like, yeah. you know, it's you can't do it on the lower fucking... Um, pay per views, and then at Kingdom, he just randomly faces like yeah. a big fucking name. Goes, up, like, goes you know, up to the double titles, yeah, yeah, like in Ibushi or a Naito or a Jay White or like mm. in a card. You know, there's there's no point for that, there's no reason behind it. He needs to be facing the young the young guys. And yeah, and to be fair, Okan didn't look too bad in the match, it was just the whole match boring. itself was quite boring, and, and the finish was shit. It was just like it's just. I mean, Tanahashi, all, all of his greatest hits, you know, he did like the middle rope cannonball, did the yeah. twist and shout, dragon screw, and then Okan for the rest of it pretty much just beat him down. Just dominated the fuck out and of him, didn't he? chops, and then that's pretty much and all whole, he did. <clears throat> and the then, whole angle was, it was boring too. Yeah. Because that rope, shot Tanahashi shoot. just hits like two high yeah. five flows to win. One to the back, <laughs> one, to, <laughs> one, to, one on his front, and then it's done. Yeah, yeah. After literally getting decimated for like ten minutes, yeah. but it was just like, uh, it, like the spot with the chair. Like the whole build up to this match was obviously when they had the t- the tag team match, and then afterwards Greta Khan just like destroys his knee with the fucking the yeah. chair, and the, he just basically brings it into the ring, and the ref's like, "Oh, you can't use that." And then he goes to try and um, drop him on it, and then it's like it backfires, and then Tanahashi picks it up, and the crowd starts actually feeling this match a little bit. Mm. And then he flings it away, and then the crowd seem even more happy that he flung it away than actually using it. Yeah, you, you probably got the biggest yeah. clap of the night when he threw the chair away. <laughs> <laughs> the whole story building up to this match was Okan went after Tanahashi's knee, and Tanahashi yeah. did the same to Great Okan, but neither of them went after the knee at all. There was like one knee bar. Yeah, it was just it made no sense, did it? Like, like say it's like a knee build up. Yeah. Said nothing. So just strange. It was dull. I expected Tanahashi to win with a figure four. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> but then now we get on to the good stuff. Now also, we get no, on to the reason. no John Moxley after the match. No, no Mox. Now so, next match. Yeah, go on, Ryan. You can tell us. Next match is. Osprey versus Okada. Yeah. Um, you know, the storyline built up to this was brilliant. 
I really, really enjoyed the storyline yeah. to this, and a lot of people get on Osprey's back and stuff, and we we won't go into why, but you know, they they really been getting on his back lately. So much so, he's he's made some of the social media outlets private, yeah. so fans comments, which I think is a sad state of affairs. Um, but <clears throat> all said and done, maybe it was that that helped him push to be you know the 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 heel that he's yeah. now, um, now showing on on New Japan. Um, yeah. You know, Tim Card there. Now he's he's all about like he was all about. Obviously, he was trying to get the best match of the night and mm. the best match of the year. And and now he's like, I want that main event money. You know what I mean? He's yeah. coming out in suits and shit and doing promos, which he's never really been the best at. Now all of a sudden, he's doing promos that people are yeah. like fucking ass. Boss, you know what I mean? He's got his misses at his side, you know. And you know, she it's was really it's, annoying during the match, though. Yeah, she's she's annoying in general. Like, but you you look at some of the greatest tales in wrestling over the years, and and they use they use like the misses and that. Like, Triple H is yeah. definitely a man, a massive example. You know, just being at ringside, it just it just works. Like a power mm-hmm. couple in it, Miz and Maurice. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it it really works, but the match I I really enjoyed because it wasn't the match that we've seen four, five, six times previous. No. It was yeah. It's just completely different to what you'd expect from a Will Ospreay match, really. Pretty much, and everyone. Are you going to Will Ospreay match? This is main, one of the main criticisms that gets leveled at him is, oh, he's yeah. all all flips, doesn't do anything. He can't tell a story during the match or anything. But if you just watch, first of all, it's never been true, and no. this match proves that he can just do more than just you know I can do a toe peg on he local. Yeah, I think as well as like because like the match he had a few years back with Ricochet, yeah, with it with literally flip after flip after flip after flip, like it got split 50 50 down the middle. Like yeah. proper wrestling fans could enjoy it, and then ones that are like, oh, well, you know, he didn't even do a suplex or he didn't yeah. even do this, or you know, it's just ballet and gymnastics in the ring. And it's like, well, if you don't like it, turn it off, shut up. Didn't it's even, pretty didn't fucking even do a hammer lock. Yeah, but it's just like, but but he didn't do <clears throat> like none of that shit. And I think because that match a few years back, like a lot of people have, that don't actually watch Will Ospreay and have only seen like the odd match like yeah. that match, just assume that that's all he is and that's all he can do. And, and people to, that have seen today, Will Ospreay highlight videos, yeah. So like today, well, it's like he, you know, the highlight package of Will Ospreay was like flips and shit, wasn't it? Yeah. So, but obviously, like today, he showed his other side and what he could yeah. actually do, and and like you say, he told the story really well. There was uh, the it was the suplex on the like over the guardrail onto the table was actually broke a Japanese table, which is quite impressive. Yeah, the thickness of them tables is a joke. <laughs> like a fucking you, you listen to to like like Chris Jericho and. And the likes of them that have gone over to do like the odd, um, you know, Wrestle Kingdom yeah. or the odd New Japan pay per view or whatever. And they're like, you know, the chairs, they always say the chairs are shit. You know, the middle falls yeah, out. They, they just breaks the suit. You touch anyone with it. Yeah. But then you get a table, and sometimes you've got to drop them on it three times for it to crack. And it still won't do it. <laughs> yeah. And if you're, you're the you've person. You've gimmick the tables, but they're just. The thickness in them is just is fucking ridiculous, man. I wouldn't like to be dropped on one of them. I wouldn't mind getting put through fucking five in one match in a WE because it makes no fucking difference. But one of them, I wouldn't I wouldn't want my back to hit any one of them. No. You know? <laughs> and you've seen it, it was like instant fucking scratches and shit. Yeah. Back was... after, wasn't it? Mm. There was... Um... Before the match, though, just to just to go back, before the match, yeah. the commentary was saying, "Oh, our card has been using the money clip a lot. If he goes to yeah. the rainmaker, maybe you can win it tonight." So that sort of took away because you're like, "Oh, well, a card is winning with the rainmaker, and yeah. then he could have done that in the build up. He didn't need to do it like as he's yeah. walking to the ring. It was it was bad commentary, that wasn't it? And then it was just Chris say Kelly. it continuously through the match. Oh, that, that annoys me. It's like it, it's like going back to the very, very old WCW days when you had fucking Hulk Hogan coming out, and it's like, but which side's he on? It's like, oh man, no one ever thought he was going to be fucking joining the the, the outsiders, and now you've just yeah, put it in no, our hands. Yeah, no one thought he was going to come out and turn heel. 
and then you just shed it as he's coming on. You're like, fuck, no. <laughs> and just then it was a like, side night. The well, money clip is so bad. It's a terrible name, too. It's, it's just, it's a Cobra Clutch. It's a terrible name. Money you can clip. Go watch that in my Sergeant Slaughter matches. <laughs> it is a, it's a terrible submission. I'm surprised, though. Like, I thought he'd have to use Remake it and then put someone in the money clip afterwards. That's what I thought um, he was going to do. During the G1. Um, but obviously not, because he said last time he actually hit the Remake, it was in January. Yeah. So, it must have been last year's kingdom. Well, the story of the match was Okada kept trying to get the money clip, and then, obviously, in the end, he does get the Rainmaker, and that's what does it. Yeah, so maybe well, that means he's going to return to using the Rainmaker, hopefully. I don't know, because he, he ended up connected with three Rainmakers. Yeah. You know I mean? And, and it's like, you know, that, that sells well off pretty brilliantly. And, you know, at one point when he put him in the money clip, um, he just knocked B Priestley off the side. Yeah. And he was in the middle of the ring. Yeah, I thought he was going to tap him. Yeah, Will literally looked like he'd held his breath, because his face yeah. was actually turning fucking purple. And I was like, oh, fuck. I thought he was going to pass, to be fair, rather than tap. Yeah, out. That was, that's what they were saying. Everyone, No one really taps out <clears throat> from the money yeah. clip. They always pass out. Yeah, well, that was the whole build originally, wasn't it? That he was yeah. in the money clip, and, and we thought we were going to get the towel throwing. Um, and then, obviously, he ended up winning. But, like, um, did you see as well, he'd done the Osprey, done the hidden blade off the top row. Didn't connect as well was as it? it does. Was it though? Because the is the hidden blade not like the elbow upwards? That was just a forearm. Well, it's like it, yeah, yeah. I, I know Kevin Kelly called it elbow, that on commentary, elbow and I was down. like, elbow. I was down. like, that's really just, just like with the forearm. just a phenomenal forearm, really. That's <laughs> like call it. It's like you know, like the Pip Pip Cheerio thing. He does like the springboard clothesline type thing. It's like calling that the hidden blade. <clears throat> I was surprised when he used the um, cheeky Nando's. Yeah, they need to change that name. No, they didn't. They, they said, oh, yeah, you won't see him do these moves. And then, like, five minutes later, he hits the chicken and those. I mean, yeah, he, I think Kevin Kelly was saying, oh, need, like, the moves need to add some something or other to them. But, like, the Pip yeah. Pip Cheerio, when you're some bad guy with an empire, come on. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he's an not awful even... name in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's not even using <clears throat> fucking Robinson Special anymore, is he? I love that move. Do that. I don't think that you can was, call it the Robinson special anymore, can he? It was um, it was his tag team partners, wasn't it? It was Robinson, in the short yeah. special. Yeah. Because he created but, the move. It's a little story time. Paul Robinson created the move and then yeah. Osprey said, can I use this? And then yeah. Robinson said, you can use it as long as you don't call it something dumb and name it after me. And then he did it anyway. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, as soon as your mate tells you not to do yeah. shit like that, you're going to fucking do it, aren't you? Yeah. <clears throat> but... Uh, yeah, it was a really good match. I think Osprey worked it. Well. Osprey hit the rain, well, the Rainham maker. Rainham. <laughs> yeah, because he's from Rainham Essex, isn't he? Mm. But I thought for a minute, I was like, ooh, that could be it. Because they kept yeah, saying yeah. about the Rainmaker, but it obviously wasn't to be. And the big one of the main takeaways is just the fact that New Japan just a very, seemed very reluctant to push Osprey. Yes, like I think that he's gonna get pushed forward, but I mean, like I, I've 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 openly said a few times in the last few weeks, especially uh, that I think Osprey will, will, will win the G one this year. But you know, after that match, I'm questioning whether yeah, you was like confident him. after what I said. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just that; it's like should should he really go from um, junior heavyweight? straight up until main events or should he at least go I know we haven't got a mid card at the moment but yeah, like but you know be, beating Okada doesn't instantly make you a no I mean G1 I'm not <clears> saying <throat> that he should be winning the title I'm just saying he got he's got to win some matches yeah well he, he beat he beat Okada didn't he before this that was the whole build up wasn't it well yeah but Okada's also beaten him like three what three four times before yeah but 
I think like it's a massive, massive hindrance to the fucking company. The fact that you know Moxley's obviously he's been away because yeah. of the virus. He's he's not been able to bring the US belt over and defend it like he like he would have done. And then at the same time, you've got the IC tied up as as a double champion, which just yeah. needs to fucking stop now. Yeah, you know it if you, really. If you look at how long it's taken a Bushig to win a title. And how long it took Naito to properly dethrone Okada? You can. It does make sense that Osprey's not beating Okada straight away because New Japan, like, when they do long term booking, they do like nine years long term booking. Yeah, and it's mad to think like Okada's still like only thirty four, thirty five, thirty two. Is he thirty two? Yeah, I think so. I think that's what Kevin Kelly was saying. Because they're saying, like, oh, most wrestlers start to get good at 32. But because it's Chikura yeah. Kada has already been amazing for that many years. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't need another seven, eight hundred day fucking title yeah. reign, but... He's going to win the G1. I, just, I don't want to see him win the G1. I really don't. not 32. Yeah, I just really don't want to see him fucking... It's going to be... This is, this is what I'm predicting early on. It's going to be... A card has now beaten Osprey. He's getting back on his redemption. He's going to win the G1. He'll be double champion then. And then... God knows what after that. We're going to end up with a fucking... A card and Naito final in the G1. Yeah. Some, well, uh, yeah. yeah, probably, yeah. Do you know what? Actually, you're probably right. Cause it, do you know what? For... To separate the titles, they need someone like an Akada to separate the titles. Because, like, Ibushi's not going to do it. He's just fucking on them both. Yeah, like, storyline-wise. <clears throat> they, like, they need okay. someone. They don't need Okada. <clears throat> but, like, someone of that stature, yeah. if you like. Um, because, like, they're not they're not going to separate the belts when Akada hasn't won, hasn't been double champion, but yet evil has, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they're obviously going to want to put both belts on him. It's the same as like fucking when they've done it in, in WE with the WE in the World Heavyweight. You know, do you know Randy Orton and John Cena both had to win it before they decided to separate the belts or, yeah. or match them into one because they're the big stars. So they're going to do it in New Japan with a card, aren't they? Yeah, for sure. Unfortunately, <laughs> it will. I think if they, if they just persist on just putting a card back at the top every time, like a year like he'll lose the title then like a few months later he'll just win it again it's going to become very boring it's, go- it's going to become I mean less people Triple will be watching H-esque. New Japan it'll be very Triple H-esque in 2000 yeah. period I mean he's already no, had what like a thanks. 700 day reign he doesn't need the title again yet no well it, you know it's been good that they haven't put it straight back on because He's, he has he has had a bit of a period of time now where he hasn't because you know Naito won it last year and then obviously Evil's had it and then Naito again now he's just put it on Ibushi. Yeah. Um, I think Jay White's going to hold both belts at some point this year. I think that's uh, the only but, hindrance with not having like real storylines in New Japan is that the only story you can have is being a champion. Yeah, but pretty you much. Just, isn't it? You don't like because at Chikorokada, he is obviously he's an amazing wrestler. You don't just want him just having like six man tag matches. No, but what else can you do with him when you don't have a story? I guess when you don't have yeah, storylines other than put a title it, on him. Yeah, well, I mean, at the same time though, like Osprey and Akada has been built with neither one of them holding like a, a big belt. You know, I know mm-hmm. Osprey's Rev Pro, but they never used that in this story or in the match at all. So they've they've managed to build a story that people are interested and want to see without without a title used. So they can do it. It's just whether or not they're going to. Yeah. So it's it's interesting. I just hope that Akada doesn't go straight back to the top. Yeah, I don't want to see that either. No. So that leads us into the final match, the main event. It's Kota Ibushi versus Tetsuya Naito for the IWGP and Intercontinental Championship. Uh, Next, the musical. I also thought that could be a good name for it. They just hate their necks. This match, (laughs) next, the musical. (laughs) It's literally, it's it's the neck-breaking match of the night, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's just like... It's just. I mean, it's, early it's, on, that, that German suplex on the ramp where Ibushi just lands square on the top of his head. 
Oh mate, yeah, he just. Oh. But I'll tell you what, there was some big spots in this fucking. There was some really good spots in this match. Uh, he had the um, the fucking. Oh, what was it off the apron? The like, well, is it a hurricane run or is it a Frankensteiner? Either way, either he'd done, I think it's I think that was a Frankensteiner. Yeah, he done it out of nothing, and yeah, and so like, even though it's not. <laughs> He tried to, like, Naito and Nabushi were trying to do break each other's neck on the apron, I imagine. And then Naito <laughs> runs at Ibushi, and Ibushi just jumps, hits a Rana off the apron, which just looked really cool. And it's much but it's much safer than, like, dropping someone neck first on the apron, just do something off the apron. <laughs> is this the match that someone got tombstoned on the apron, or was that a card? No, that was a card, that... Osprey. Was it? Yeah, that was a good spot. Yeah. Um, and then there's the like the off top rope avalanche poison rana yeah yeah in which he spiked himself sort of on to Naito <laughs> <laughs> but the, like... the the near falls in this match were really really good yeah I, I do like a match with near falls it makes you go fucking hell this could actually now go 50-50 because I think yeah. everyone pretty much said that Bushi was going to win but to be fair last year everyone thought he was going to win it exactly yeah I think more so this year because he just signed an exclusive contract during the year to New Japan where as previously he wasn't so I think that's yeah. why more more we felt this year he'd actually get the big belt I, I still can't believe he's like fucking 39 years of age is he? yeah he's like doesn't ridiculous look it, does he looks about 16 <laughs> Um, I just remember talking to fucking one of my mates in work, um, Ben Freeman. I don't know. Yeah, I keep sending him the pod. I'm not sure if he listens. I need to ask him actually. But well, um, he, he's the one that actually told me a couple of months back. We were talking about the whole Jay White Abushi, you know, build up and that. And he's like, "Oh yeah, the Abushi's like 38, 39." I was like, "Fuck off, no, he's not." And he's like, "Honestly, honestly." And I was like, "Nah, nah, I, I couldn't believe it." I was like, "No, he's about the same age, Jay White." And I was like, "Anyway, I went, I went on my break and straight onto the Google Google yeah. machine." And I was like, "Fuck off!" I was like, "That's <laughs> ridiculous. He's nearly forty, and he's literally gets dropped on his neck and like." Like every fucking match. Yeah. It is like there was a lot the near falls in this match, like the early Destino. I mean yeah. when you hit when that wasn't as convincing because when you hit a finisher early on, you're like, well, that's not it. In the main mm. event of Wrestle Kingdom, you're gonna do one finisher finish. Absolutely not. Yeah. But then there was the he hit a last ride, like obviously his finish is like the sit out last ride, but he just hit it straight up last ride into the Kamagoye. And then you're like oh shit, he's done it. But then Naito <laughs> kicks out of that. And then there was another Destino, but he didn't really hit it properly. He sort of did the tilt to wall and just fell. Yeah. Which was interesting. But again, that was only a two count. Uh, the, and then Abushi took down the knee pads, hit a V-trigger into the Kamigoye for the one, two, three. So would you say this was match the night over Osprey and Okada? Uh... I'd probably put them level, to be honest. It's hard to pick, isn't it? Yeah. I think I think if we'd have just got a normal bog-standard um, Will Ospreay match, well, say bog-standard, bog-standard for Will Ospreay, because yeah. none of the matches are like, but if we'd have got normal what we'd seen five, six, seven times over, yeah. then you'd probably put this higher. I mean, but then again, we've seen this match how many times as well? Oh, yeah. Know? That is, that is a main problem in New Japan, unfortunately, is they, they do have to keep redoing the matches because they yeah. don't have a wide range of like top stars, if you like. The it's the the difference between like the main event and the mid card is massive. Yeah. And the fact that they have no mid card at the moment. Um, yeah. yeah. But I think because of the different aspects of like, you know, the way they done the Osprey a card of match to be completely different to what we'd seen before. And then obviously Naito versus Bushi, you're always going to get a class match out of them. Like say it's the neck breaker match, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, I think you're right. I don't think I could actually pick between the two a favorite. Yeah. I don't, there's nothing like completely stand out, but they were obviously good matches, but there wasn't anything you're like, Jesus Christ, that is like one of the best matches I've seen in a while. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that that is true. But again, you don't want your your um your first night Wrestle Kingdom to. I mean, you still want it to be outstanding, yeah. but you don't want it to to flag over um the second night. 
Yeah. You know, I mean, you don't want to watch night two and then go, oh, fucking hell, it should have stopped at night one because it's not yeah. so much better. Um, so, I mean, go on. Go on. No, you carry on. I was going to say, I mean, like, overall, what would you what would you say it was, like, out of five? What, the whole show or the match? The whole shebang, yeah. As three out of five, maybe a 3.5. Yeah, I was thinking, like, 3.5, yeah. It was... Uh, it's hard to say. I think, I think the, it was just a bit dull. I, I think like the three point five being like you know you had you had you had the start match that I think could have had so much better that potential. Been, that probably could have been match of the night if yeah yeah LP didn't get injured. Yeah, and then obviously Tanahashi in a calm is just like pretty much a snooze fest. Yeah. Um, so obviously that drags it down a bit, but you know the the rest of the matches were good. Like they, they've clearly put on a clinic again. You know, yeah, it's there's still nothing gonna... outstanding there. No, it was not an absolutely outstanding. I yeah. definitely say though the last two. If you haven't watched it yet and you listened to this before you've watched it, you know, um, I don't know why you do that, but if you do, yeah. um, the the, <laughs> the last two matches are definitely worth just going yeah. and checking out. You know, if you, if you don't want to sit there for the three hours or whatever it was in the end. I think um, it was three hours 40, was it? Three hours 40, was it? Fucking hell. Which is, I think that's why you, that's also why you've got to, what you've got to consider when you're saying how good it is as well. Like if, yeah. If you sat through like a three hour show, but they yeah. all the matches are average, then you're like, like you, you mark it below average because of the amount of time. But yeah. Obviously, like the after fact- the match as well. We didn't talk about after the match, which yeah, I instantly well, called as soon as Ibushi won. I said, I said in the little group chat, we've got Jay White's going to come out and ruin the celebration. Then he'll cel- Ibushi will celebrate properly tomorrow when he beats Jay White. And yeah. wouldn't you believe it? Out comes Jay White with Gado. See, like the problem with this I have is it's pretty much exactly the same fucking storyline we got last Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah. You know, Naito picks up both belts on the second night, goes to celebrate. Kenta comes out, obviously attacks him, shuts up Kenta versus Naito, and then when, when Naito beats Kenta to retain both belts, he then celebrates yeah. with his confetti and everything else. And so, but it's, exactly. It's, when that, when there's know. no confetti, you know there's something going on. Yeah, it's it's not even just that. It's 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 a fucking year later and they're using the, the exact same storyline, yeah. and it's still Bullet Club as well. And it's just a bit like, no, you should you you didn't need to do that. Uh-huh. We expected to see Jay White, yeah. So have Jay White come out, do his little speech and that, you know, to build up the match for night two to get everyone interested. And then as he goes off, Naito could have easily celebrated them with the confetti. Uh, sorry, Ibushi yeah. could have celebrated them with the confetti. Also, the sure. main issue with this, one of the issues with the show is the fact that it's still double title. Ibushi lost yeah. his match to Jay White for the right to yeah. challenge for the for both titles, winning yeah. the G. Well, is it even the right to challenge for both titles, or is it is the G One climax just not just for the world title? So yeah, surely, just, if Ibushi yeah. lost that match, Jay White obviously challenged for the heavyweight title on night yeah. two, sure, because yeah. that's he's won he's won the right to challenge. But then Ibushi. Naito can just go. Well, you were cheated out of it. You don't have your, you don't have the heavyweight title right to challenge anymore. But I'll let you challenge my IC title, and then you split the belts. You get a mid card back. Yeah, and everyone's happy because it's just well, it's stupid. They, they wanted to put the the belts on Ibushi, and that's why they've done it. And the, and the reason, obviously, why they wanted to put. But if they wanted to put uh, the belt on Ibushi, why did Jay White win? Well, Jay White won. To then sort of um, not have it as being all plain sailing, you know what I mean? Um, it's it's a storyline that's been used many times in in the world of wrestling, hasn't it? You know what I mean? They've yeah. done it years ago at WrestleMania to get Rey Mysterio and Randy Orton and Keith Angle into a triple threat. You know, it's it's a story that's been used so many times. Um, but yeah, you're right in what you're saying. This the the booking should have been that, but obviously they had was it Ibushi saved Naito and then Naito was like, Oh, out of respect, I'll give you a shot at my belts. Yeah, something like that. And that was the story, which was quite poor. Mm, like, it's I'd, just, I'd, I'd, if your main goal is to put the titles on Ibushi, there's no need for Jay White to beat him. And mm, if you're gonna put oh, the titles on Jay White, if your end goal is to put the titles on Jay White, have him win the G one. Yeah. 
or just do it like like I like I said fucking yeah. the other, the other day and 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 do it show that Osprey versus Jacquard is the main event for this night and then night two have it as a triple threat I'd have preferred to have watched the triple threat with the three yeah. of them going for the two belts I think that would have been better than the so many done. better ways to to do it book it yeah 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 Unfortunately, there is. I mean, like, there's there's not many things that I complain about with New Japan. You know, obviously, I complained the other year when they took the belt straight off Jay White because what was the fucking point? Um, I'm I'm desperate for them to get get the belt again. Like, I'm a massive yeah, Jay White fan. Jay White. Everyone knows I'm a massive Jay White fan, and you know, against literally anyone, I'll I'll always pick Jay White. Or same with well, Osprey. Um, yeah. but but when you're looking like. You know, Abushi's just won the fucking belts. Do I really want to see him lose him straight away the next night after how many years of the, the build up? No, I, you know, I don't. Yeah. Of course, I don't. I want him to, you know, be at the top. But at the end of the fucking day, if it's against Joe White, I'm, I'm always going to pick Joe White. Mm. It's. Sure. Yeah, it's not the great. It's the sour note to end on. Yeah, we pretty much like buzzed off the whole fucking doing this podcast, and then we've just tore it apart at the end. Well, tore yeah. apart all booking of fucking <laughs> Wrestle Kingdom. I mean, do you want to have a look at the night two card and go through who we think is going to win that? Yeah, yeah, let's do that one before we finish. Then right. is that because you? If you come on, say I know you're dying to. Yeah. That you got every single match. Oh, predicted. I did actually. Yeah, I did get every <laughs> single prediction right. <laughs> they all laughed to be, when I said Okada be would be Osprey. It is a hard thing to do um, with New Japan normally. I don't know. Not when not when there's an Okada match. Yeah, I mean, she. I think I with that one. Like it, like I said, and it's the same with it will be tomorrow as well. Like I, although I probably did think that Okada was going to win it, it made probably more sense for the story for Osprey to win it. But like. I tend to pick more who I want to win rather than who I think to win. So that's probably a bit of a letdown. Keep talking shame about with, the match card. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's it's shame as ELP. Like I picked the ELP to, to beat Takahashi, although I thought Takahashi would win. The reason I picked the LP was because we've seen Taka versus Ishimori, although it's a superb match and it'd be a superb match against Mono. I would have liked to have seen um, Ishimori versus ELP. And like you say, Bullet Club versus Bullet Club would have been fucking interesting, like. Yeah. So that's why I picked them two matches. So, but at the end, they they were my predictions, and I stand by them. So is this Wrestle Kingdom fifteen? Fifteen, mate. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm not finding it. Why? What are you googling? Sixteen. <laughs> okay. It's, um, uh... The first match is the uh, King of Pro Wrestling, whatever it is. If it's a belt or a trophy, whatever. Uh, so that's Tori Yano versus Bad Luck Fale versus Bushi versus Chase Owens. I'll just go Bad Luck Fale. To be honest with you, like as much as I'd, I'd, I'd originally have probably said Tori Yano, um, like because the way they've done the whole thing and that, I've got a feeling it might actually be Chase Owens. You know, I beg it's Chase Owens. Just on basically watching the build up to the actual. Um, the actual match today, the way they were like, oh yeah, he's, he's, he said he wants to be number one and then like, Ishii's music hits and they're like, oh, but you're regretting that decision now, aren't you, Chase Owens? And then Suzuki and like, oh, you've done yourself there and like, them two are elbowing each other and he goes up and they both turn on him and then go back to each other and like, there's numerous times where he's clinging on to like, the bottom rope and they're like, oh yeah, you've done it to yourself now, haven't you? And like, they over-fucking-sold it so yeah. for the reason alone, I'm probably going to say Chase Owens. Uh, the next match is the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. Uh, champions Al Desperado and Yoshinobu Kanemaru taking on the world famous team of Ryusuke Taguchi and Master Watto. <laughs> uh, Desperado's coming off the back of the Best of Super Juniors final. Uh, I'll, go, I'll go over the challenges. I'll go with Taguchi and Wato to win. I just think champions are going to retain. I don't think they've done much with Master Wato. Kanemaru so, sucks. Yeah. He's like Yujiro it, Takahashi. They've done literally not much with them for me to think. 
Otherwise, really. How long have they held the belts for? I don't know. Uh, next up, we got what might actually be match of the night. We've got Shingo, the Never Open Weight Championship. Shingo Takagi taking on Jeff Cobb. Awesome. Jeff awesome. Cobb. This is going to be sick. I think yeah. it's just going to be brutal. I think it's going to be like a fucking Ishii Suzuki where they just fucking go from the fucking yeah, get gonna, go. They're just going to smack the shit out of each other. And if they don't, I'll, I won't be very happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they're going to have like got... a technical clinic. <laughs> Wrist holds. <laughs> go. So, is it, it's Shingo's in his second reign, I want to say. Um, uh, Jeff yeah. Cobb's already it once before, but it was a very, very shit reign. Yeah, Jeff Cobb's never been fully pushed in New Japan, but obviously he wasn't signed, but he is now signed to New Japan, I think, isn't he? Yeah, he's signed with New Japan, and he's because uh, he was part of the New Japan sh- Strong. On the US um, tournament, you know, the US Challenge yeah. tournament for the briefcase. He had a little story going with Kenta, which was good. Um, you know, they, they, they started him in the G1, they got a couple of losses and then started to pick pick up the yeah. pace. Um, you know, and, and now he's part of um, Empire. I know you said Kingdom for some reason. Now he's part of Empire. I think that, you know, it, it makes sense to put a belt on him. Yeah, if they're smart, they'll have Jeff Cobb win because Great O'Connor and Osprey both lost. Yeah. So you don't if you want to, do you want to really want to bury your your big your new big hill faction? Mm. Like in the first yeah. big test. So I'm gonna go yeah. Jeff Cobb as well. Yeah, Jeff um, Cobb definitely. Evil versus Sonata. Sonata. Yeah. Nothing more just to be about that match. I think Sonata's just better than Evil. <laughs> yeah. Um, Taiji Ishimori versus Hiromu Takashi for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. That could be match of the night if it's based mean, on the match yeah they had a couple of years ago. That could easily be match of the night. I mean, they'll probably just put it back on Hiromu. I'd imagine so. I can't. I can't really. To be fair, what I'll... they usually do with the with the juniors, isn't it? Whoever wins, yeah. if you win the best of Super Juniors, you're winning the title, basically. Yeah, pretty much. I can't. I can't really see anything different from that match. But to be fair, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really be bothered either way, whichever way they do no. it. Like, you know, they, they're both really talented in ring wrestlers. So I'm not really bothered who wins that. The but, junior heavyweight yeah. division, though, has really taken a hit. Yeah, massively. Just even just having Will Ospreay not in it anymore. Yeah, even, yeah. You know, he's, you know, absolutely superb. Last time he is, he was and the best of Super Juniors line up that it's like it's not as strong as it used to be no and obviously then that's why they done the Super J Cup wasn't it because they couldn't get over to do, take part in yeah uh, best Super Juniors but like the lineups from either one of them weren't exactly no outstanding were they and you know they, they're probably the best two that they had was just um, ALP and, and, and Takahashi and obviously they, yeah. they had both win a tournament and then face each other which was good I mean, if you look at who's left, like recently, though, Kashida was always like a, a big star in that division. Marty Skull was yeah. also. Yeah, Marty. Marty yeah. Osprey's yeah. left that division. Just yeah. all the all the big like attractions have left the division. But this should be yeah. a good match, and I'm going to go for Hiromu. Yeah, I'll go with Hiromu. Like you say, it's normally what they do: put the belt back yeah. on. Him. And that leaves the main event. For the for both the IWGP and Intercontinental titles, Jay White will be taking on new champion Kota Ibushi. It's Kota. I'm sorry to say. Yeah, but, uh, as much as, again, I'll do what I've done before, which obviously failed today, but I'm <laughs> going to go um, with who would rather... Uh, I don't know whether I'd rather see it, because I think I would, I would be a bit pissed if they took it straight off. And like I say, this... Yeah. this the way they've booked it, it's been terrible. Um, but I'm never going to go against Jay White, so I'm going to say Jay White. So, I think Jay Matt... White! Oh! Just on a side note, <laughs> breathe with the switchblade is a shit catchphrase. Like, what does that what even about, mean? What about his King Switch t-shirt? <sighs> switchblade club. 
Oh, I've got my Switchblade Club t-shirt hanging up in my wardrobe, ready for tomorrow. I can't wait it's to slap that. Breathing the Switchblade just doesn't make sense. What the fuck has breathing got to do with a Switchblade? Uh, well, if you've got a Switchblade, the person you're going against probably isn't going to be breathing for much longer. <laughs> I mean, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's uh, like King Switch. King Switch is just a bit weird. It just doesn't really go. No, like Jay White or oh, Switchblade Jay White. That that's that's good, you know. And then obviously, yeah. you, like Switchblade Club, everyone clubs everything. Go to sleep yeah. club, Jizzy go Boxes to sleep club, <laughs> <laughs> Spunk Trunk Club, <laughs> yeah, Bone Soldier Club. You know, it's it, you don't, I think they could do the. The t shirts are like having to just throw a club at the end of everyone's yeah. nickname. Just do, you know, yeah, just do a Kenta t shirt. You don't need to put club. <laughs> Kenta club. <laughs> <laughs> like, the um, move is like having your move on there is so bad. Like, I can't wait for like the Gunstun club t shirt. That's going to be good. Like, Super Power Bomb club. <laughs> but it's just like the, the Go to Sleep club. It's so bad. It's just like, because. Because it's like advertising that, oh, yeah, the go to sleep club. Yeah, we're well, that good. We'll we'll send you to sleep while you're watching us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think like... that about wraps this up. Yeah. Uh, if so... you Whatever you're listening on, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Podbeam, whatever, make sure you hit the corresponding whatever button, subscribe or follow. Uh, like the videos. Uh, find us on Facebook, Hard Cam Wrestling on Facebook, also the wrestling group, Hard Cam on Twitter. Just find us everywhere. It's quite easy to find us. Leave us comments. Let us know yeah. what you like, dislike. Um, if you are listening to this today and um, before tomorrow, hit us up with your predictions for night two. Um, and we are going to be doing the exact same tomorrow and podcasting and reviewing night number two. And it'll be myself. Ryan Sangster and Joseph Parr. Indeed. And on that note, thanks for listening and goodbye. We're out of here. <laughs> <laughs>